Welcome back to another opportunity to learn, grow, and evolve together. Coming back to and pulling out more of that peace and that power that we have at the core of all of us. Just a matter of uncovering it. And today I want to dive into and talk a little bit about how we can continue to show up in the world from this center of peace and power in this core self even amongst all the world events that are going on, the conversations around COVID, the conversations around war, the conversations around the economy, just our personal life challenges that are going on. It's so easy to get wrapped up in them and lose ourselves so that we are no longer coming from this centered place. We are no longer coming from this place of peace and power where we can consciously create the world and the life that we want to. So it's very important to know how to stay grounded and have that centered place that you can always come back to and how to do it. That's important. And another reason that it is important is because it allows us to show up in a resilient way. It allows us to show up in a conscious way. It allows us to make effective decision making that aligns with our values and our needs again so that we can create the world that we want for ourselves and create the world that we have as a vision for the macro. And that's the second piece here. We have the you know, world that we want to create, the life we want for ourselves, but also as we live from this place of peace and this place of power within ourselves, we can really begin to create change on a macro level. And it may seem we're only one person, but one plus one, one plus one plus one plus one, it adds up so that we really start to create a domino effect of change. And we can create a much kinder, a much loving, a much more conscious world. And that's my intention here with this video, is just to allow us a space to work on and come to this core loving place that we have within each of us that is clear, that is loving, that is accepting, and it allows us to create a world that we want to create. And I'm sure there's other reasons why it's important for you to stay centered, for you to stay grounded in this place that you could think of on your own that I'm not thinking about right now. So feel free to jot those down or feel free to even drop them as a comment down below so that I can become aware of them and that other people can become aware of them. But I really want to dive into the tools that I have personally employed in my life that help me to remain grounded, that help me come back to my core self and stay centered. The first most valuable tool in my life has been just having a routine, having a routine in each day so that I know how I'm showing up there's not, you know, a bunch of planning each day, guessing each day how my day is going to go. I get to relax into how I know parts of my day are going to go. And that allows me much more space to show up from a grounded place because things are already decided for me for some parts of my day. My routine personally looks like having a, a two hour block to myself in the morning where I wake up. I brush my teeth, I have a big glass of water, I wash my face, and I meditate for 20 minutes. I have some movement in there, usually before my meditation, where I'll walk around a bit, I'll stretch a bit, maybe I'll even do yoga. I'll meditate, and then I'll have some moments to myself just to either do some journaling, reading, or reflecting before I go out into my day. Now this two hour block Usually this routine is a full two hours or an hour and a half. But in this two hour block in the morning, my phone is still off. My phone is still on do not disturb because I want to come to myself first in the morning so that I can come up to my day, show up in my day from this powerful, peaceful space. So it's important to start the day for me by coming to myself first and then the world, instead of coming to my phone in the world first and then myself. 
because when we start the day by checking the price of Bitcoin or by checking world events or by seeing the different meetings that we have during the day, it is going to entirely change how we show up during that day. And it can also induce a more reactive mindset for that day. So the mornings for me, no phone. From the moment I wake up at 7 a.m., I wake up at 7 a.m. every day, and I don't touch my phone until 9. That's very important for me. And the phone thing really limits exposure to a, a million things that could be going on in my life and in the world in general. It allows me to show up to myself first. Now, the second piece of my day that is usually very determined for me is my evenings. I like to go to bed at 11. And what I'll do is I'll turn my phone off by 10 or 10.30 so that I'm limiting my screen time just to the light itself and also to all the things, the conversation, the news, the meetings, the emails, so that I'm not caught up in that. And it lets my mind start to turn off, to start to settle down so that I can have a better, more peaceful, fulfilling, restful night's sleep. Because that sleep is super powerful for our ability to show up in the world in a grounded way. Within that hour before I go to bed, I also like to journal and do some breathing exercises. So I'll journal usually just two things that I am grateful for about myself that really raises my energy and allows me to be in a peaceful state before going to bed. It's also just beautiful to be in that reflective state and seeing the beautiful parts of how I showed up during that day. And the breathing exercise is usually just a slow breathing exercise that allows my body to start to turn down the volume and again, make it so that I am going to bed from a more restful, peaceful state. And these two things, this morning and this evening, really allow me to have a much more centered day where I am more responsive instead of reactive. I have a strong foundation in how I'm going about my day. Now the second tool that's mixed within my day is really how I am nourishing my body. I choose to eat and drink foods that are plant-based on the lighter side, more whole organic foods, because these foods are allowing me to have higher energy, a clearer mind, a healthier physical body also, instead of having really low energy in a really unclear mind from high processed foods and lots of sugars and foods that are heavy and really taking away from my energy because they take so much energy to digest. So I like a lot of fruits in my day, a lot of water in my day, a lot of vegetables in my day, and I also love to eat a lot of bread because I'm Italian, but I try to do it in the healthiest way possible. How I eat makes a big difference in how centered I can be because just think about it. If I'm having a lot of sugar in my day, it's going to make me a bit nuts, right? That sugar high. If I'm having a ton of caffeine in my day that has also a lot of sugar in it, it can also make me nuts. So allowing myself to be aware of the foods that are keeping me in a state where I'm a bit more conscious, a bit more centered, a bit sharper in how I can show up. Foods, hydration, having the structure and the routine of my day, very important for me. I also like to do a little bit of intermittent fasting too, so I usually won't eat until 12 or so. And that allows, I don't, I don't uh, eat after 8 p.m. and I typically don't eat until 12 uh, p.m. So that allows for a very good amount of time for digestion to happen as, as well, intermittent fasting. If you're interested, you could Google that and there's a lot of information on it. The third thing that I employ in my day, a practice that I employ in my day, is something that I talk about very, very frequently for many reasons, and that is meditation. Meditation has been a godsend to me because meditation is a formal way to, again, create space between ourselves, our core as self, 
and all of this stimulation going on around us, the world events, our personal lives, even our thoughts and our emotions, it allows us to ground into that center, that awareness, that core as self, so that we can respond to life instead of react to it. So that we can witness life instead of get caught up in it and identify with it. That is a huge thing for me. I do it when I wake up, and I also do it around 3 or 4 p.m., and that allows me to just show up to all parts of my life, my relationships, my work, all of it, in a much smoother way, in a much more conscious, choice-based, instead of reaction-based way. And meditation doesn't need to be a formal practice either. I also like to bring that same space and that same awareness to my day just in second bursts, right? Between meetings, taking a few deep breaths and just becoming aware of that breath, becoming aware of my state. In between getting from my house and into my car, taking a deep breath, becoming aware of, of my breath and, and becoming aware of my state, creating that space, letting go just for a few seconds, letting go of what's going on during our day and what we're planning for the rest of our day in between meetings, in between conversations, wherever. Just allowing ourselves to hydrate with a deep breath instead of just getting caught up in the current of the day. It's very, very helpful for me. The fourth tool that I think, yeah, fourth tool here, and I mentioned it already because it's part of my routine, is having movement in my day. In the morning, I really like to practice yoga because it allows me to come from here, being in my head, to being here and in my body, right? Because sometimes when we got too caught up in our head, right? When we're in our head, we're dead. When we're in our body, we're smart, right? And that's kind of like a rash generalization, but it just speaks to the fact that we can really drop into our bodies and as a result, come to our day with a little bit more flow than just being in the rigidity of our thinking and constantly thinking through our experience. Being in our bodies allows us to ground that much more because we can start to feel the sensations of our body, the weight of our body. We can start to feel each muscle and how each muscle works through that yoga or through that meditation. I'm sorry, not through the meditation, or through that walking. There's many ways to move your body that allow you to go from here to here. Yoga is one for me. Walking is extremely powerful for me because as I'm moving that energy around in my body, it allows me to let go of what's going on up here and just be here in the moment, right? Our body is our physical attachment to the present moment and that really is powerful for being centered, for being grounded. So those are four tools. And I'm sure you could think of many other ways also to move your body that allow you to drop in. And that's kind of where my fifth tool is going, where I am just encouraging you to look at your life. And I ask my coaching clients this question of where in your life, what activities do you feel that you're most connected to your true self, right? And what are you doing in those activities? Answering that question, typically I get the answers of playing an instrument like the guitar, drawing or painting, singing or dancing, right? There's all these different practices that really allow us to ground into the moment, to come into that flow state, to forget about what has gone on in our day so far, forget about what's going on in our day in the future. And just coming back to this present moment, and that is really all that we have is this moment, right? Our mind just projects into those different time spaces, but we're here. So finding other practices that really work for you, like playing an instrument, like playing a sport, working out at the gym, dancing, singing, whatever it is for you, employ those throughout the day. You just get five, ten minutes, because what's going on here is you are allowing yourself to tap into you and uh, as a result become sharper in your mind because you're raising your energy. So you're sharper in your mind. 
you are a little bit healthier because maybe if you had cortisol, the stress hormone going on and pumping through your body from the earlier part of the day, this allows you to just tap into that serotonin, that happiness, tap into that dopamine, that pleasure, right? And it really makes a whole different energy, a whole different experience for your body and for your mind. It's to tap into these things. And if you still are like, nah, like I have shit to do during the day. I have to be here for this meeting. I have to be here for that, right? I have to be on my game. Abraham Lincoln said this, this quote that has always stuck with me. And that is, you give me eight hours to cut down a tree, I will spend the first four sharpening my ax. These grounding exercises, whatever they may look like for you, allow us to cut that tree down 10 times faster than if we just went, out, went at it without these grounding and these centering exercises. Because we're showing up from a totally more powerful, clear, conscious energy. Because we're centered in ourselves instead of being lost away from ourselves because of the things that are going on in our day. And that is extraordinarily important. Now, if I forgot some centering exercises that you might be able to think of, please drop them down below in the comments. Let's have a conversation about them. Make me aware of them because I could always go for another practice that might be extremely beneficial for me that I don't know about yet. And I'm sure other people would like to see them as well. Anyway, I want to also let you know that every Sunday morning now at 9 a.m. Eastern time, I am holding a Sunday centering and meditation, group meditation and centering exercise, where we can just tap in, start the week, start the day with being in this place, but as a group, as a community, we're doing breathing exercises, we're doing meditation, we're doing community exercises and open sharing and gratitude exercises. It's a really beautiful way to set intention for the week ahead and just be with that day. Coming to ourselves first, first thing in the morning on that day. That's important. You can find information on that down below to sign up for the next Sunday that's available. If you found this valuable, please feel free to drop some comments down below on what pieces really stood out to you. Ask me some questions or share some insights that you had. If you want to comment or uh, share something privately, you can do that through my Instagram. We can have a conversation there as well. And lastly, I am now offering, as I've said in the past few videos, one-on-one -on -one coaching so that we can take all these principles that I talk about excuse me, that I talk about on my YouTube channel, and we can bring them together in a very personalized way, a unique to you way that allows you to, again, really operate in your life from that place of peace and power, but really to create, to begin creating or to continue creating the life that you want that is fulfilling for you, that is from what you really want instead of somebody else's agenda for you. And that is a place of fulfillment. That is a place of high vibration energy where you can be happy with your life. So I offer one-on-one -on -one coaching. The information on that is also down below. Lastly, 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 a like and a subscription goes a far way, but only if you really enjoyed this content. And that's it. I look forward to hearing from you. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Much, much, much love.